Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I am a part-time online reseller and I sell mostly used clothing, shoes, and handbags, occasionally some hard goods, some vintage on sites like Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. It's the perfect way to make some money on the side and I'm happy that you've decided to join us here on the channel. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. In today's video, we're going over what sold from July 16th through July 31st of 2021. If you've been watching my what sold videos for a while, you know that we are in a different room. It's usually my reselling space in the background, but my fiance is working downstairs and I didn't want to interrupt him. So if the lighting is off and the sound might be a little echoey, I do apologize. I'm doing my best here. All right, so let's get started on Mercari. As always, I actually had three sales. The first one was a Rock Band 2. This was just one of my own games laying around. In fact, I actually forgot to bundle it with my Guitar Hero that I sold a few months ago. I think I listed around nine or $10 and someone sent me an offer for eight and I quickly accepted. And then the next two sales were back to back and they were very exciting. They were both from my Thread Up 15 piece mixed jewelry lot which i will link that video up here and also down in the description box if you haven't seen it yet i highly recommend you check it out it was a good box so this first necklace was called made by mary and it was a uh, rose gold filled necklace very simple very basic but also very nice looking i listed it on mercari for 25 dollars, and within five minutes someone sent me an offer for 20 which i happily accepted and then the other item was only listed for a few days, maybe two or three days. It was a Giles or Giles, G-I-L-E-S, uh, Giles and Brother Sterling Silver ID Cuff Bracelet. There was a spot that you could engrave on the bracelet itself and it hadn't been engraved yet, so that was a plus. And it sold for $40 and that was an offer that someone sent to me. So of those three Mercari sales, they totaled $68. There was $9.67 in fees, giving me a profit of $58.33 on Mercari. Moving on to Poshmark, where we had 15 sales. Although I didn't have a ton of sales on Poshmark, I had some quality sales. As a reminder, I'm just going to give a brief highlight of some good sales and possibly some bad sales, just to give you an idea of what is selling for me. And starting off with a bad sale. So this was a pair of Tom's Espadrille wedges. These came in a Mercari box, a reseller lot that I purchased. It was advertised as being in good condition, but I got several pieces that were not in good condition, including these. They appeared to be gently worn, maybe like a couple of times, but then it looked like they sat in someone's closet for years. The shoes were really stiff. You could see that some of the glue was starting to disintegrate. I did do like a twist test and a pull test to make sure that it wasn't going to come undone when the person wore it, but I thought maybe someone could at least wear them a couple of times or wear them for an event. So I listed them. They sold for $10 and after my cost of goods and everything, I walked away with a 67 cent profit. So I didn't lose any money, but I certainly didn't make any money either. This next sale wasn't anything spectacular, but it just goes to show how customer service is extremely important, especially in an online business where people can't see you face to face. So it was a Cosa Bell sage green skirt. This had no fabric tag, but it was very fuzzy and it did feel like it was made of like a different type of animal, maybe like rabbit or alpaca or something like that. So I listed it as I saw it, I described it. There was one little area that had some of the fur rubbed away. I did notate it. And after sending an offer to a customer that liked it, she reached out to me asking if it was a hole or if it was just one little area where the fabric was rubbed off. I told her I was away from my inventory and I would look at it in a few hours and get back to her. And I did exactly that. Immediately when I got home, I pulled out the skirt. I actually couldn't even find the spot because it was so small, but I wanted to note it just in case. There was no hole, it was just worn away fabric. I let the customer know and she purchased it within a minute of me telling her that. So even though we get asked questions on certain things, just take those two to three minutes to look and it may result in a sale. So this skirt sold for $20. This next sale was a pair of Marchesa black suede caged stiletto heels. 
I tried these things on and I honestly don't know how anyone can walk in them, but they were very pretty. They did not feel like they were of super great quality though. So I was surprised when I looked up comps and some of the similar ones were selling for over $125, $150. Apparently this was part of like their bridal line or something to that effect because every time I found these shoes, they were white and they were selling as a bridal shoe. So I listed mine at 125. They got a lot of interest on all platforms. Finally, someone sent me an offer for 90 after being listed for maybe three or four months and I very happily accepted because that is a good chunk of change in my pocket. Next is a random full price sale that I got out of the ThreadUp 100 pound bulk lot. This was a Sheragano Houndstooth Dusty Rose dress had cute little velvet covered buttons on it and it sold for a full asking price of $30 and it only went about an hour away from my house. The next two back-to-back -back sales were items that I got from ThreadUp's Outlet Center. So I like to sort by assorted items and unbranded items in both their Outlet Center and their regular store and I saw these flats. I thought they were teaks at first because they have that shape but when I zoomed in on the picture, I saw it was the brand, the Storehouse Flats. So I quickly did a search on Poshmark and I saw that these were selling for about 65 and up. It actually seems like they were selling right around retail and a lot of them were boutique items. So I'm not exactly sure if these are a wholesale type of shoe or if they're just sold in boutiques. But anyway, I purchased both of them. I did pay up for them. I paid $12 for each pair. However, the first pair was a pair of brown. They were just plain leather flats. They sold for $42. And then the next one was a pair of black flats that had this embossed like leopard print on it and they sold for $56. And those were both offers that were sent to me from the buyers themselves. So if you're out in the thrift store, definitely look up that brand. If you have like a really fun pattern, it seems like those ones do better than just the classic solid ones. And then the last exciting sale was another piece from my thread up jewelry lot. This was a necklace from the brand Machete. It was freshwater pearls and like a peach quartz square stones in between all of the freshwater pearls. It felt very nice and made of high quality materials. I looked it up on their website and it was selling for $98 retail. So I listed it for 35 and it sold within one day of an offer that I sent to the customer for $28. So of my 15 sales on Poshmark, we had $452 in sales. $92.60 in fees. I did give out some shipping discounts, of course, $10.50 worth, giving me a profit of $349.50 and an average sales price of $30.13. That might be my highest average sales price ever. I don't ever remember it going above like 20 or 25, so yay. Moving on to eBay where I had 22 sales. The first exciting sale was a Italian cookbook. I got this at an estate sale. It was vintage. I can't remember the actual year, but I wanna say 1950s or 60s. This cookbook sold for $20 through the global shipping program and it went all the way to UK. So this next sale was kind of a meh sale. <laughs> I had this bright idea two years ago that I was gonna go look at all these discontinued beauty items and find a gold mine. So I went into the store big lots and I started scanning everything. I thought that I hit something good. So this was a set of VO5 sulfate-free conditioner and shampoo. Well, I only found $2.83 worth of a gold mine because these sat for two years. Now, they did not have any expiration dates on them. So that's why I was able to let them sit there for two years. Of course, I made sure that they were stored properly and everything. And someone purchased these for $12.99. And like I said, I net, net profited about $2.83. So lesson learned, I will not be picking up shampoo anymore unless I know for sure that it is a good one. This next sale was a vintage pin that I still have no idea what it's supposed to be of. <laughs> So I thought it was like a butterfly or some kind of insect. I, you know, I turned it upside down. I turned it sideways. I did Google image. I even pulled people on Instagram asking what it was. They said grasshopper. A few others 
it's just said feathers. So in my listing, I put insect, bug, butterfly. And if you happen to know what this is, leave a comment below because I'm still baffled as to what type of thing this is. But it did have a green stone um, as an eye, I'm assuming. And it sold for $12, which was an offer that someone sent to me. Next couple of sales are more jewelry, which I'm very thankful for because I was listing jewelry for like a month straight and I wasn't really selling a lot and I was getting a little bit nervous, but then things started to pick up. So whew. <laughs> the first sale was a pair of 14 karat white gold Malore Italy non-pierced ears. So instead of, you know, like clip-ons, they usually had the little clamper. These were spring earrings and you had to kind of like pull them apart in order to get them on their ear. Really lightweight, really nice quality earrings. I picked these up from an estate sale and they sold for $64. And then another exciting jewelry sale was a pair of 14 karat gold screw back earrings. And these had huge cubic zirconia or faux diamond stones. They were in excellent condition. I got these again from the same estate sale as the previous earrings and they sold for $54.99. And then the last interesting sale was a Columbia High Low Exercise Skirt. It was called the Timeless Travel Skirt, I believe. And it actually had just gotten returned to me a few days prior to me relisting it. It originally sold the first time for $13 and this time it sold for $18.25. Happy to make a little bit more money off of that one. So of my 22 eBay sales, we had $375.74. I made a profit of $26.39 in shipping because what I charge the customer versus what I actually pay through eBay is less. So I do make up some money there. My fees were $86.23, giving me a profit of $315.90 and an average sales price of $17.08. Now for the total. I had 40 sales on all three platforms, $895.74 in total sales, $172.61 in fees, and that includes the shipping totals from both Poshmark discounted shipping and what I made in eBay as profit. Cost of goods this time was $143.60, giving me a net profit of $579.53. And my average cost of good per item sold was $3.59. And if you've been watching for a while, you know I like to keep it right under $4, so that is perfect. So happy that eBay is starting to pick up sales again. I really haven't changed anything. I haven't run any more sales. I'm just, I'm just continuing to list. And we just have to remind ourselves that in the reselling world, the work that you put in today may not pay off until months or sometimes years later. So I'll always keep that in mind when you're feeling discouraged because it does happen to everybody. Thank you for tuning into this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you aren't a subscriber, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.